I want the men to be responsible too. I want the women to practice abstinence or contraceptives instead of having abortions, but I also want the men to do the same thing. You know, it takes two to tango. I think that they should actually step up and take responsibility for their own actions. And that goes a long way in telling people where your priorities really lie. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now I'm going to very quickly go over some of the most common arguments that I've seen on social media and in other places. These are arguments that are not new to the conversation. I mean, we're talking about arguments that have been there for decades since Roe v. Wade came out. So uh, some of these are newer than others or get used more commonly than others, but these are just sort of some of the quick uh, ways to rebut some of these common arguments that you see people on the left and people that are in favor of abortion making. So first of all, very common one, very easy to rebut, men shouldn't get, get a say. So there's several very easy ways to rebut this. First of all, you should point out and I think this is appropriate to do, that that's an ad hominem fallacy. So for those of you who aren't well-versed in formal debate, just explain to the person, well, that means it's a personal attack. It's not actually an attack on the ideas. Like my ideas can be right regardless of whether or not I have the same experiences as you. For example, right is right regardless of who says it. Slavery is actually a good example of this. Like based on that standard, Abraham Lincoln shouldn't have been against slavery because he was a white guy. Or, you know, the men that voted for the 19th Amendment, they shouldn't have voted on that amendment because they were men. And so why should they get to vote on a, a law that says women have the right to vote now? See, right is going to be right regardless of who is actually saying it. And so because of that, um, you should always start from a position of you're not attacking, like I said, the person, you're attacking the argument and say, look, if, if my ideas and my arguments are flawed, by all means, point those out to me. I'm open to criticism. But you saying that I can't say anything because I'm a man, that's just a convenient way to end the conversation. And if you're confident that your position is the correct one, then you shouldn't need to use that as a way to defend your argument. Um, and the thing is, and this is a important point to, because sometimes people won't accept that at face value, an important point to bring up is that the truth is, there's not as much uh, there's not as much difference between men and women on this issue as you would think. There's some, but it's certainly not all of it. So let's go ahead and look at this poll. This was taken by Vox News, and it was a question back in 2019 about where people stood on the issue of life, men versus women. Now you'll notice the people that identify themselves as pro-choice just barely over 30 percent. That's actually the same for men and women. The ones that are pro-life, interestingly enough, has more women that claim to be pro-life than the men. And I wonder if that is because there have been so many men that would otherwise claim to be pro-life that are not because they've heard this argument over and over again that if you're a man, then you're, you're not allowed to have an opinion on this. Or maybe... It's because there are some men kind of in the, the gray zone where they're, they're deadbeats and they want to be able to have sex, but they don't actually want to outlaw abortion just in case they need that as a backdoor uh, to, to eliminate the child that they've created. There's a couple of different reasons why that could be the case, but the point is, even on that stat, not a ton of difference in men and women. And the same goes for the ones who would consider themselves neither or both. So when you say that, when you look at the numbers, it's actually not true that women are significantly more likely to be uh, in favor of abortion than men. So let's look at a Pew Research poll, and this one is a little bit more recent. This is from the year 2022. I think it was uh, May, so this is really only about a month, month and a half old. So if you look at this one, this gives a breakdown of when abortion should be legal or illegal in all or most cases. So you will notice that when it comes to legal, abortion being legal in most cases, women are a significantly higher 
portion of that. But when you talk about illegal in most cases, it's a little bit more even. And even though 63 is higher than it's been in a while, that still means that there's a significant portion of women that think, or sorry, excuse me, that still means that there's a significant portion of women that think that abortion should be illegal in most cases. That's a little over a third of all women. And if you get into the, this is a very straightforward poll. If you get into the actual details, like when abortion should occur, when it should be illegal, when it should not be illegal, that kind of thing, because um, somebody that, again, this kind of goes back to the polling thing that I was saying earlier, you could ask somebody, do you think abortion should be legal in most cases? And they would say, sure. Um, but all or most cases could also mean that it gets restricted at like 24 weeks or 15 weeks. And so, again, this is just kind of giving a bird's eye view of it. If you, I would imagine if you got into the actual details, most women would fall in the category that most Americans do, which is that it should be regulated on some level, but not necessarily at the level that they're talking about here, all or most cases. How you define most cases is very important in that question, because what somebody might consider most wouldn't necessarily be what the next person considers most. And another thing that I would like to bring up is if you ever do confront somebody that takes the stance on it, a good way to kind of build a bridge is to bring up, I do think that we should make men more accountable. Like, I'm bothered by the fact, and I'm not just saying this to win an argument, I genuinely believe this. I am bothered by the fact that it seems on every level we have done everything we can to disconnect sex from responsibility. Not just on the consent side, but also on the childbearing side, which is the natural result of having sex. And I am very, very bothered by the fact that there's a lot of times where the man just kind of skips town and doesn't really bear any financial responsibility whatsoever for the product of him using a woman for his own gratification. And so because of that, I really do think that there should be a lot steeper legal penalties. And if you are doing that, then you need to take responsibility for what's going on. I think that there should be tighter legal repercussions on men. And so that really goes a long way, especially for people that are of the pro-choice persuasion, specifically because they're feminist. That goes a long way in showing them that, look, this isn't about uh, just wanting women to have a bad time or just not caring about what happens to them. I want the men to be responsible too. I want the women to practice abstinence or contraceptives instead of having abortions, but I also want the men to do the same thing. You know, it takes two to tango. I think that they should actually step up and take responsibility for their own actions. And that goes a long way in telling people where your priorities really lie. Because at its core, real men want to protect babies. Real men care about babies. They want to defend them. They have that male instinct, that protective instinct that drives us to defend our children. That's the way that this works. And so because of that, even children that aren't your children, we have that protective instinct. And women, even when ones that are feminist and wildly pro-choice, when you say that and when you sort of bear that out, when you have that attitude, they recognize it. And they may not even necessarily agree with you because of it, but at least they will respect it. There is something internal in them, unless they've just gone over to full depravity. There is something internal that recognizes and admires men that genuinely want to protect people that they view as innocent and in need of protecting. And so because of that, that's a really good starting point if you are a man trying to have this conversation. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.